Hi, and welcome to Memoranda and Business Letters. Here's where we're going. What is the purpose and format of a memorandum? What are some strategies for writing effective business memos? What are the 15 elements of a standard business letter? Memorandum. A memo, or memorandum, is normally used for communicating policies, procedures, or related official business within an organization. It is often written from a one-to-all perspective, like mass communication. A memorandum can inform, persuade, or even call to action. One effective way to address informal, unofficial grapevine speculation is to spell out clearly for all employees what is going on with a particular issue. Memo may also include statements that align business with employee interests. A memo includes three parts with purpose. First, a declarative sentence that announces the main topic. Second, the discussion that elaborates or lists major points associated with the topic. And finally, the conclusion that serves as a summary. Five tips for effective business memos. Audience orientation. Always consider the audience and its needs when preparing a memo. Make sure the goal is clear, unambiguous, and includes concise communication at all levels. A professional formal tone. Memos are often announcements, and the person sending the memo speaks for a part or all of the organization. Subject emphasis. The subject should be clear, specific, and concise. Direct format. Memoranda are always direct. The purpose is clearly announced. And finally, objectivity. Memos are a place for just the facts and should have an objective tone without personal bias, preference, or interest on display. Avoid subjectivity. Letters. Letters are brief messages sent to recipients that are often outside the organization. They might include introductions, announcements of a product or service, apologies, and other emotional messages. Here is a popular business letter example template. Fifteen elements of a business letter. Return address. If your letter includes a letterhead with this information, either in the header, which is across the top of the page, or the footer, which is along the bottom of the page, you do not need to include it before the date. Date. The date should be placed at the top, right, or left justified five lines from the top of the page of the letterhead logo. Reference. Like a subject line in an email, this is where you indicate what the letter is in reference to the subject or purpose of the document. Delivery, and this is contextual. This can make it clear to a third party that the letter was delivered via a specific method such as certified mail, which is a legal requirement for some types of documents. Recipient note, and this can be optional. This is where you can indicate if the letter is personal or confidential. Salutation. A comma after the salutation is correct for personal letters, but a colon should be used for business letters. For example, Dear Mr. Smith, colon. The salutation to whom it may concern is appropriate for letters that are intended to be read by unknown individuals. Avoid the use of impersonal salutations like dear prospective customer, 
as this lack of personalization can alienate a future client. Introduction. Introductions include an attention statement, a reference to the purpose of the document, an introduction of the person or topic, a clear opening in your introduction facilitates comprehension. Body. If you have a list of points, a series of facts, or a number of questions, they belong in the body of your letter. Brevity is important, but so is clear support for key points. Specific, meaningful information needs to be clear, concise, and accurate. Conclusion. A conclusion should not include new information. It should reiterate the main points with a clear summary sentence, reinforcing the purpose for writing. If your letter requests or implies action, the conclusion needs to make clear what you expect to happen. Conclude by thanking the recipient for his or her attention and invite him or her to contact you if he or she has any questions. Close. Closing statements are normally placed one or two lines under the conclusion and include a hanging comma, for example, sincerely or cordially. Signature. Five lines after the close, type your name, this is required, and on the line below it, your title, this is optional. Preparation line. If the letter was prepared by someone other than the signatory, which is you, then inclusion of initials is common, such as an MJD. Enclosure attachments. This line indicates what documents are included with the letter. Common examples include brochures, reports, and related business documents. Courtesy copies are CC. Just like a CC option in an email, it indicates the relevant parties that will also receive a copy of the document. Logo contact information. A formal business letter normally includes a logo or contact information for the organization in the header or footer. The five parts is a good summary. It includes the heading, which includes the address and date of the sender, the introduction, which establishes the purpose, the body, which articulates the message, the conclusion, which restates the main point and may include a call to action, and the signature line, which sometimes includes the contact information. As an extension, be sure to be clear, concise, specific, and respectful. Each word should contribute to your purpose. Each paragraph should focus on one idea. The parts of the letter should form a complete message. The letter should be free of errors. So to conclude, memos are brief business documents usually used internally to inform or persuade employees concerning business decisions on policy, procedure, or actions. Letters are brief print messages often used externally to inform or persuade customers, vendors, or the public. A letter has 15 parts, each fulfilling a specific function.